Hey YouTube, Drone Tech here. As much as I'd love to talk about something else, the media continues to give me more reasons to stay on this topic. Today on MSNBC, during a discussion about the Smollett hate hoax, one of the guests actually suggested that the police aren't credible and that it's Jesse Smollett who should be, quote, believed, respected, and honored. The guest claims that Jesse's story has never changed, but we know that that's not the case. For one, during the ABC interview, he claimed that the two men that were captured on camera were his attackers, but we now know that wasn't the case and that those two men were actually two Nigerian friends of his from the show. Those two guys have now admitted that they were hired by Smollett to fake this attack, and police did recover uh, documents showing that they needed all the items that were used in the attack, the rope, the bleach, and the red hats. Why didn't anybody on this panel stop this man from making a complete fool of himself? Uh, Jesse Smollett's, his statement has stayed the same, so he's been consistent. So it's really the police department that has had shifting versions of what they think happened. You know, people think that the police solve crimes. The reality is most crimes they don't solve. So in Chicago, the clearance rate for murder, the most serious crime, is only 20%. So even 80% of murders they don't solve. So the reality is we may never know exactly what happened. Well, Paul Butler helping us keep our eyes on what is important in this story. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate your insights. This is all really blowing up in the faces of all these allegedly principled and objective journalists, uh, the news organizations, and these Democrat politicians who were all very supportive of Smollett. And isn't it interesting that two of those Democrat politicians sponsored an anti-lynching bill that came out the exact same time that this event occurred? Which tweet? What tweet? Uh, the, about uh, saying that it is a modern day lynching that... Um, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, Jesse Smollett. Um, uh, uh, okay. As I showed you yesterday, CNN's little imp boy, Brian Stelter, has been in full propagandist mode, insisting that only entertainment and Hollywood stars played up the story. It's too bad for Brian Stelter that we have the internet and dozens of examples of the media going all in and hyping this story from the start. His attackers hurled racial and homophobic slurs. Two people yelled racist and homophobic slurs. Racial and homophobic slurs. Not only homophobia, we're talking about racism. We're talking about hate with steroids. They are looking for two suspects who are apparently wearing Make America Great Again hats. The offenders uttered, this is MAGA country. Mm. And this is America in 2019. Why would somebody in such a high-profile position lie so brazenly when it's so easily debunked? Why not? Who's going to call them on it? Fox News? Some guys on YouTube? Who cares? These guys lie all the time and get away with it on a daily basis. At this point, they can't even hide the fact that they were willingly duped because of their blind hatred for Trump and his supporters. On MSNBC, one of their guests let the cat out of the bag when he accidentally admits that the story took off because it fit the media's narrative of orange man bad and his supporters bad. I don't know what to make of all this. Because yeah. when the news came out, a lot of people, myself included, were horrified. Absolutely. Um, just the, the circumstances and the way he told the story and, this, uh, uh, and uh, what, ha what he said happened to him sort of fit in with a narrative, not a narrative, but a, a reality for a lot of people in this country since President Trump wa was inaugurated. Did you catch that? He stopped himself just short of admitting that they bought into this story because it fits the media's manufactured narrative that the media spews on a daily basis. Have you noticed that none of these people are upset that he manufactured a story that's going to incite more hatred and paranoia of white people and create more division in this country? It seems like they're more upset that their narrative has been busted here and that people are probably going to be more skeptical about stories like this going forward. In other words, it's going to hinder their efforts against Trump in the 2020 election. And as I predicted, as soon as this story started to be debunked, the media pivoted over to, oh, this might not have been a real hate crime, but it brings attention to all the real hate crimes. You mean like that white student who was kidnapped by black students and then tortured live on Facebook? The media wasn't nearly as interested in that story. As Newsbusters managing editor reports, between January 29th and February 14th, the network spent 101 minutes and 22 seconds helping to push Smollett's claims of being assaulted by a racist and homophobic Trump supporter. Since then, 
When the facts started to show that Smollett may have orchestrated and paid for the assault, the network spent an additional 55 minutes and 23 seconds on it between January uh, 15th and February 18th. In contrast, on January 4th, 2017, that was the day the story broke on the white kid that was kidnapped and tortured, ABC World News Tonight and NBC Nightly News skipped the story entirely, while CBS uh, News only allocated 27 seconds to the story. Between January 4th and 7th, the network news spent 24 minutes and 38 seconds on the crime. By January 7th, they were so tired of the story that ABC and CBS ran fleeting morning news briefs, 21 and 19 seconds respectively. Meanwhile, NBC didn't run any report at all on either newscast. That's pretty damning, considering that the kidnapping and the torturing of the white teen was broadcast live on Facebook. It's not like there was any question if this happened or not. We all know that if that had happened to a black kid or an Asian kid or a Hispanic kid or a Muslim kid, that it would be a huge national story and the media would use that story to prove that America is a racist country. And I've heard it be said by journalists uh, in the past that when things like this happen, for example, when a Muslim kills a bunch of people in a nightclub, that the media is going to downplay Islam's role in that attack because they don't want any anger uh, focused at the Muslim community. So by that standard, is the media trying to incite anger and hatred towards the white community? It certainly appears so. This appears to be the case, as some on CNN were even downplaying the incident as a hate crime at all. But I'm going to say something that's probably not very popular. We cannot callously go about classifying things as a hate crime. Motive here matters. So was this for hate of Donald Trump? Uh, the president-elect because of the things that he has said, or was this for pure hate of white people? That matters. because One thing is for sure, this will continue to get worse. The only result to all this propaganda and misinformation is going to be violent conflict. So why would the media want a violent conflict in this country? If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments section. Um. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like my content, support me on Patreon or PayPal. You can find the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Thanks.